hope you're all doing well. Today I am going to try a new recipe. I want to make some meat and I had this leftover potato that was just sitting there. I had started to eat it but then I said, you know what, let me throw it in some vital wheat gluten and see what comes out of it. I'm always experimenting trying to make the best dish ever. Okay, so there was a half a tomato that was on the counter from breakfast. I'm taking a whole tomato, I'm throwing that in. Just kind of break it up with my hands. And it wasn't a big tomato, I'm not sure if you could see it. It's about half the size of my hand. Let me show you. I would say one smallish to medium potato. Okay, now we're gonna put some vitamin gluten. This is the make I use, by the way. I get this on Amazon. Pretty decent pricing. Okay, not sure if you can see it. That's the make I get. I have to measure for you guys because I basically always just throw things in the pot. So here we have one, one cup. And I have just a little bit left here, so I'm going to wait to see if that tomato makes this too liquidy. Now, we're not going to add water because we do have a fresh tomato in this. But I will add some olive oil. There we go. And let's say about two, three tablespoons of olive oil. If I need more, I will use more. Okay, and I'm going to be using some of my beefless powder. Now, if you want this recipe, I have it up on YouTube. And let's say about a heaping tablespoon of it. And now I've got to make some more of this. Okay, so we're just going to blend this up and it's going to tell me if I need salt or if I need extra oil. It's going to be very simple, of course. I do want to get some of my mushroom powder. And I am going to use, this time around, some of my Lion's Mane. But you can use any mushroom powder you have. I love shiitakes. I'm probably going to end up putting some of the shiitake in the water when I'm cooking it this time. And when you're making mushroom powder, especially if you're making it yourself, um, number one, you have to dehydrate the, uh, your mushrooms. And then you want to put one of these little dry sacks and it keeps it nice and dry so we're going to put a nice heaping tablespoon of lion's mane and lion's mane guys i don't know if you know but this is brain food it's they actually are doing studies where it helps people who are losing memory so having lion's mane in your diet is very good if you can't find it fresh do buy it and then turn it either into powder or if you can find it fresh most likely at a market otherwise you're going to end up finding it dry okay so we're going to just blend this up and it's going to it's going to tell me what else i need okay i'm going to spare you the sound Before I go any further, I just want to show you my process. As you can see, it's nice and wet, but my potatoes aren't done. I have a whole potato here, which I should maybe break it up a little. It's going to be a lot easier to blend through. I might need just a little extra vital wheat gluten. But normally I use plantain, and we love my plantain meat. That's a must now. But I'm always experimenting, especially if I have leftover food, such as a leftover tomato, some potatoes, as you can see. These were just baked in the oven, uh, basically cut in half and then put on top of um, a tray, and they were cooked that way. So there's really no seasonings whatsoever in the potatoes. Now I'm tasting it, and I do see I need a little bit of salt. I will add a little extra olive oil and if you're going to use olive oil always try and use the best olive oil you can get and there's some extra flour which I'm going to measure for you so you have an idea this is probably a quarter cup let me just check
Huh? Was I right? Look at that. This is an extra quarter cup and maybe a tablespoon. Okay. So I'm going to add that. And what the potato is going to do or what the plantain does, it makes it a little more tender. I'm not sure if you've made seitan with just vital wheat gluten. It could get a little rubbery. So by adding what I'm adding right now, it's going to make your meat just a little tender and adds great flavors and body to your meat. It's not going to blow up the way seitan would normally blow up. It will get a little bigger, but it's not going to balloon on you and then go back down. So... But it's nice to just try different things with your food and see what your family likes best. Or in my case, what I like about it is that I use up foods that I have in the fridge or any leftovers. All right, so let me just continue with this and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, just want to show you what it looks like so far. And remember, the more you beat it, the better it is. It activates that protein. But I will add a little extra bite of wheat gluten because I find it just a tad soft. So let me just move that down a bit. Yeah. I mean, it's still good, but I just want it just a little firmer. So I'm going to use one heaping and maybe a half. And see where that takes us. I will add salt because this has no salt whatsoever in taste. So I'm going to use about maybe half a teaspoon. Yeah, let me measure it. Is that a teaspoon? No, it's just a little over half a teaspoon. And don't forget, some of the salt is going to run into the water. Okay. And we are going to blend this again. Okay, I've got a little bit of flour. And now I'm going to put my dough on there. Now, if you want this more meat-looking... Uh, what you could do is add some beets. And if you're okay with the way it is, that's good too. Okay. Sticky. Okay, and if you have a little bit of tomato skin, it's not the end of the world. Now, if you don't want the tomato skin, what you could also do is run that tomato in very hot water. You could even boil some water, put it in a bowl, let your tomato sit there just a little bit, scrape it with a knife. Once it, you pull it out of the hot water, just scrape it with a knife. The skin is going to peel off for you. But I don't care if there's a little bit of tomato skin in my, uh, in my meat. Just taste it for salt. Meat doesn't have to be salty. It's what you do to the meat later, right? So not to make it stick to my rolling pin, I'm going to just flip it over like this. And I'm just going to kind of flatten it out a little. By adding flour in between your layers, what it's doing is not making you have that very massy piece of meat. It kind of helps separate it. Then 
I'm just going to roll it up. Look at that. Perfect. Erica, you want to get me a little bit of fresh rosemary? If you don't mind. Uh, not a lot. I just want to put some in the. Uh, actually, I can use some dry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm just going to crush this up really good. Now, if you don't like rosemary, you don't have to put rosemary. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to. This is more to give it that kind of. Like a pork roast flavor but you don't have to guys remember that eh and I have this apple that's kind of turning might as well use it I'm gonna give it this kind of pork when we weren't vegan, my father used to make the best pork chops. I know saying best when I'm a vegan doesn't sound right. But today, just the thought of it makes me sick to my stomach. But yeah, we will not do that. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit of this. And we're just going to flip it over. And we're going to just roll it out again. Now, you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to use what I'm using. You can simply use, um, if you want to use uh, like a taco seasoning, you could do that. All right, we're going to just shred some more. And I'm going to put the rest in the water. And I'm going to put just a little extra rosemary. Okay, we're going to fold that in half. Just want to flower the bottom. I use, I bought, uh, uh, spelt and I grinded it myself so this is what you have <laughs> all the skins of my flour I'm gonna throw it back in here for when I make bread but all the skin separates okay yeah I buy the ancient grain and sometimes I like to grind my own flour okay All right. That should be pretty good. All right. And now we're just going to roll it up like a roast. Okay. And we're going to cook this. We're going to let it sit so everything sticks up together. And then we're going to cook it in a little bit of broth just make sure that everything kind of glues back together we don't want nothing coming out we want to keep it inside the roast and that's it so i'm going to see you in a little bit after this has been sitting and then we're going to make actually i can make the water now so if you wait I'll put this aside and i'll show you what i'm going to use in the water All right, guys, let me show you what I'm going to do with the water. Very simple, of course. I like simple stuff. I do not want to complicate my life. 
All right, I'm gonna push that over. Okay. Everybody asks me where I get this. I get this, if you're in Montreal, uh, near Atwater, there's a place called Le Bou, and that's where I get it. They have different styles. I love this one because since I became vegan, and then we're talking now over 15 years, I lost count what year it was. The idea that it says vegetable just makes me happy, guys. Okay. So, we need this. We are going to add whatever apple is left. Okay, I had these in the fridge. I was trying to do something, but they're starting to shrivel up like I am. So I'm throwing them in. I'm going to use it in my broth. You don't have to put as much as I'm putting right now. Not to waste it. I'm using it all in here. We're going to add a little bit of water. It doesn't have to cover the roast. Even if it's halfway up the roast, it's good because you will flip it later. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of olive oil. We're going to put a little bit of soy sauce. Actually, I'm using tamari, not soy. Okay, just taste it. Yeah, a little more. I have a little bit of dry rosemary. I put it with the twigs. Sorry, can you see what I'm doing here? Okay, we're going to put a little bit of black pepper. Okay. We're gonna put some onion. Yeah, I guess I could put the whole half onion. You could even put it with the skin if you want to. Okay, taste that. Mm, definitely needs salt. I don't wanna put too much, uh, I don't wanna put too much soy sauce, but I do want the water nice and salty. Okay. We'll mix that and check it out in a bit. Even though it's got soy sauce, it's kind of, it's kind of going to give it a little of that Italian flavor. I want this to stick. So I just will let this sit just a little longer. If you, I don't know if you remember me showing you. I collect oat leaves and I let them dry because what I do with this is I, um, I use it in my pickling stuff. But I also like it when I'm cooking meat because it kind of kind of adds a little bitterness to the water. Those are the tannins in the leaves. Uh, if you don't have oak leaf and you know a neighbor who has an oak tree, you could ask them if you can take some and then just dry it up so you can use it for pickling or when you're making your meat. I'm going to go get, do I have one here? I need some bay leaf. Yes, I have some dry bay leaf right next to me. Okay, we have one. And we have two. There we go. And we're going to put a little bit of hot pepper in there. It's the only one I have, which is started. I'm going to use that not to waste it. I'm going to put half for now with the seeds because we love our food spicy. But remember, guys... If you don't like a spicy, don't put in the spice. Very simple, very easy. Okay. Okay. Now, I bought this. It's called a beef stew spice. I bought this at my Asian market. It has a clove in it. And that's why I love using this because of the clove. Now, if you don't have this and you're going to say, where am I going to find it? I would say put a couple of cloves in your water and maybe some paprika and that's going to cover that's going to add the flavor and i don't even use a lot i use well, maybe a full teaspoon eh? yeah there it is remember i'm always see i wanted to say i use only half a teaspoon but it's always heaping so it ends up being a whole teaspoon and remember i only use that because of the taste of the cloves 
I'm going to use a little bit of red peppercorns. If you don't have red, you could use white, you could use black, whatever you have. And I'm going to mix this and taste it again. Yeah, let me just use this. Definitely needs more salt. Okay. Where is my salt? Here's my salt. I could have even used... I could have even used... Uh, extra soy sauce but I don't want to run out of the soy sauce okay so that should be good my roast should also be nice and sticky and I'm gonna put it in as you can see it doesn't completely cover it but it's gonna do what it's gonna do it's not the first time I do my broths my broths are always basically the same I might add sometimes peppercorn sometimes I leave it out because I'm just too lazy to go get it um, I did put an apple because it has apple inside my roast and I didn't want to waste it because it's already, like I said, shriveling up like I am. So I did put that. I did put rosemary in the water. I did put a bay leaf, salt, which is mostly what you want, and a little extra olive oil. And remember this broth here, if you save it, you're going to make one of the most delicious, delicious gravies ever. Oh, yes, I said I was going to put mushrooms. Okay, so oh, ran out of shiitake mushrooms. Okay, so I am going to use the mushrooms that are dehydrated. Uh, these are wild oyster mushrooms that my husband picked over the summer last year. And they're nice and dry. I'm not sure if you can see it. So I'm going to add just a little bit of these. And... That should do the trick but if I had a choice I would have used those Asian one the ones you get at the Asian grocery store they look like button mushrooms but they're not sometimes they call it flower mushrooms but they're basically a shiitake mushroom and they're round like a brown button mushroom but it's not if I had a choice I would have used those but because I ran out and you know when you have too much of everything you're not you're never checking what you're running out of which is a bad habit of mine but I did have some of these and that's what I'm gonna use and that's it I'm gonna cover it I'm gonna bring it to a boil and then I am going to first bring it to a boil and then I am going to simmer it and I'm gonna simmer it for a whole hour all right okay all right guys I'll see you in a bit okay I can't believe I actually ran out of that mushroom, but I want to show you. Uh, I've got reishi that I also uh, pick, I harvest. If you know, I love to pick up wild edibles and mushrooms are on my list of picking uh, because I end up having them either in the freezer or I dehydrate them. So I've got it for the whole winter and look, I'm still using some of the stuff that I picked last year for instance i've got here maybe here we are these are so medicinal they are so medicinal these mushrooms it's a shelf mu mushroom it's a polypore how do you know it's a polypore because you don't see any gills this if you had look at this one it was fresh uh you would it's like a smooth bottom. Sometimes you're lucky you can see tiny little holes. But that's a polypore. This is a mushroom that I picked. Here's another one. And very, very medicinal. And so what I do is when I get a chance now that they're nice and dry, I will turn this into powder and then I will use it. See? There's a polypore underneath. You can see this is still fresh a little bit on this side. And I actually picked these not long ago. But they're, you can't really eat them. You can make teas with them because they're very medicinal. But you can't really sit there and eat that type of mushroom because it's a very tough mushroom. It's you know, You'll be chewing until your teeth fall off. But if you take those and turn it into a powder, like my reishi that I picked, now it's no longer a full mushroom I could actually take these and throw them right in to my uh, 
into my broths and it flavors the broths and then you're able to consume them that way i pick everything clovers this one here is a mix of clover mint and false chamomile which is pineapple weed so delicious and we pick them we dry them and then we bag them and we have them for teas there's so many things you could do with wild edibles uh, i showed you my dandelion you can make honey you can make so many things with that stuff really really good so guys if you haven't done any wild uh collecting wild edible it's a must you should really really fun to do and like i said if you haven't in the beginning there's books you could buy uh if you haven't done it uh if you've never done it what you could do is actually uh follow maybe a group that you can uh, join when they go out there's so many things you could do to learn i will try like i say i promise you but i feel like i'm overwhelmed sometimes but i will try to make videos but it's going to go on my other channel on things you could do that cost you no money whatsoever and you can make delicious food okay so here it is it's starting to boil now remember because i put the potato it's going to be a light colored meat I don't care if it looks like beef, if it looks like pork, as long as it tastes good, that's what's important for me. So as you can see, this meat is a very light piece of meat, which is nice also because it kind of gives you that. That's why I make dishes like this because it kind of resembles some of the foods that we used to eat. Not that I need it because I can live on grass. Believe me when I tell you that. I'll show you a video where I'm actually eating grass. And I'll show you what part of the grass to eat that's very good for you. But here it is. It's coming to a boil. I can smell the cloves. I could even put a little extra paprika. I could even smoke this. It's really up to you how to do it. I just don't want it to stick. Now I'm just going to simmer it. Bring it down very low. Cover it. And I'm going to put a timer for... Uh, where is my timer? I'm going to put a timer for 60 minutes. And then I'm just going to shut it and let it cool off. And don't throw away that broth because you can make a delicious gravy with that. All right, guys. I'll see you in a bit. All right, guys. I have to put this. I'm hoping not to steam you up. I probably will. Okay. I put this. I actually put it for an hour and an hour. Yeah, an hour and a half. I put this in. I find that the plantain recipe is firmer than this one. This one feels almost still soft, but it shreds. That's a good thing. It shreds easily, but I want to see what it's like, and it tastes delicious. Mm. The taste is freaking amazing, but I want to see what it's like when it firms up. Now, the one that I have up that's made with plantain, it firms up in the, it's firm in the water. When I say it's firm in the water, this one feels softer in the water. I'm not sure if you can see it. See how easy I could lift this up? So we're going to see what it's like once this cools off. The plantain one, you can serve it right after you cooked it. The broth is fantastic, dear God. The broth is fantastic. You got to do it exactly how I did it. This one here, I'm sure is going to be delicious once it cools off. So I'll see you a little later with this one. Okay. Uh, this one here, it's so beautiful. Okay. The broth is fantastic, guys. Uh, this one here, uh, I'm waiting for it to cool off. Like I said, the plantain was a lot firmer than this this feels a lot softer uh so we're gonna see maybe i'll try it again next time. well we're gonna see when it cools off but uh, the plantain one you can basically eat it right away uh this one yeah i definitely have to cool it off and uh we'll see maybe next time i'm gonna try the same same type of recipe because it all depends what i have in the house right uh, but We'll see if I have to use maybe less potato or maybe less tomato. Uh, maybe use tomato powder instead of fresh tomato. But I like the fresh tomato because then I don't have to use any liquids. 
So that's why I like the fresh tomato. Uh, but very delicious in taste. Holy God, it's really, really good. And this broth is to die for. Can't wait to make a nice gravy with this. Yeah, it just feels a little more wiggly than the one I do in plantain. But this is what I do, right? I play around with recipes and I see which one is good. If it comes out good, of course, it's going to go up on YouTube. And if it doesn't come out good, I'll probably still put it up on YouTube and tell you what I did and what I think I should do. And then try the recipe again, maybe altering it a bit until I get it right. But the flavors are amazing. Really, really good. Remember, when you make a roast like this, it's not just for slicing. You could put it in... Oh, sorry, timer off. Uh, it's not just for uh, using it as a roast. You can use it in sandwiches. Uh, you can... Uh, turn it into minced meat. So there's so many things you can do with this. You could even shred this meat the way it looks. So I'm excited to try it out. All right, guys. So I'll see you a little later. And uh, yeah, the flavor is amazing. All right. Now this has been cooling. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Beautiful in color. It's a little softer than my plantain, but this is going to be delicious anyhow. Maybe I will add extra vital wheat gluten to make it a little firmer. But if I put my fork in, you do feel that it's firm. Uh, it pulls apart nicely, like if you want to make a pulled pork. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it comes off really, really nice. So I'm excited about that. But what I'm going to do is, again, I always brown this in a pan with a little bit of maple, uh, just a little bit of mustard and olive oil with some rosemary because I do want to give it that pork flavor. And pork and rosemary is the bomb. So I am going to just show you what I'm going to add in my pan. I'll pull this aside. Okay, I'm going to put, I'm going to turn this on first. And of course, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. You just want to get the outside nice and crispy. And also what that does is it keeps all that moisture inside your meat. Okay, let's see if I can get a little mustard in here. And a little bit of maple. Give it that nice little crisp. Okay, now you could put steak spice if you want. In this case, I'm only using a little bit of black pepper. And of course, I'm gonna add rosemary. It's raining here, so I'm not gonna go out and get the fresh one. I am gonna add some dry rosemary. Just a little bit of red peppercorn, and I'm just gonna crush it. And here's my roast. Okay, you just want to get it crispy on both sides. Do not throw away this beautiful broth. You have to taste this. It is fantastic. So this is going to go into a jar and then I'm going to make a nice gravy for another day. But for now, all I want to do is crisp up that meat. And then I'm going to show you when I cut it up. A little bit of salt. I just want to show you that meat, how it just pulls apart. Eric, you want to taste it? Yeah. Is it hot? No. You want to take it? Mmm. Good? Mm-hmm. There we go. We're just going to get it nice and golden. And... It's going to hold all the juices in, guys. Yeah, still nice and firm. See? 
see how the meat falls apart. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Let me try it. Wow. Very good. Okay, so I'm gonna twist this. I'm gonna twist this up, and then we're gonna cut a piece. Beautiful. Okay, so let's see. As you could tell, it's easy to pull apart. Beautiful meat. Delicious meat. I think. Look at that. Very beautiful and light and juicy. Look at the juices inside that meat. Isn't that beautiful? Phil, you want to come and try it? Mm. Really good. Pardon me? We'll see if Mikey likes it. You want to try it? What is it? It's like a pork roast. You're not going to burn. Hmm. Good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. There you go, Mikey guys. Mikey likes it. Mikey likes it. Delicious, delicious vegan meat, guys. Hmm. That's good. Beautiful. Nice and light. Usually, seitan gets really dark when you cook it. And look at this. Beautiful. It's, it's a win. If you want it a little firmer... Uh, I find it's great the way it is, but if you want it a little firmer, I say um, add a little extra vital wheat gluten. Okay? This is dangerous. I could sit there and eat the whole thing. Anyhow, I'm going to take a picture of this, and I'll put up this video for you guys to enjoy. And if you give it a try, come back. Let me know what you think. If you'd like to see more recipes like this, subscribe. And don't forget... Press like if you liked it, and if not, that's okay too. I'm going to say I love you, and guess what, guys? I'm going to see you in my next video. Erica, do you want to try it? Mm -hmm. Daddy liked it. Mm. Good? Mm. There you go. There you go. All right. It's a winner, guys. Okay. Love you. Bye.